Hello, everyone. That's, uh, thank you for coming. My name is Matthew Shakespeare, and my capstone will be looking at the current state of pine plantations at Huron Natural Area. All right, so for a bit of context, Huron Natural Area is the city of Kitchener's largest natural area. It is valued for its natural beauty and recreational use. In other words, it's a rather lovely park. I would recommend going there over the summer. It has really nice trails. And also a bit of cultural heritage. Uh, that is uh, within the historical uh, territory of the neutral nation. Uh, they were called neutral by the French missionaries uh, for their neutrality between the Iroquois and the Huron, from what I understand. So if you look at this map in the dark green areas, that is the lands within Huron Natural Area. The orange is the private properties, light green is the city properties. And the main missions for this park is mainly to maintain or improve the ecological integrity and in a nutshell, educate its visitors on its ecological value. So I'll be focusing on the pine plantations. So the contacts on the pine plantations in the 1800s, uh, the, the lands have been cleared for agriculture. Unfortunately, due to farming practices, that has uh, that soil has been degraded, became sandy, and so by the 1940s to the 1950s, farming activities has uh, stopped, and uh, they're either abandoned, only used for livestock grazing, or they planted pine plantations. So by the, around approximately 1955 to 1966, uh, the first uh, plantation was established. Uh, this is a rough estimate based off of uh, aerial photography. Then later on, 1966 to 1972, two more plantations were established. By the 1980s, the area was zoned for industrial use, but fortunately, by the 1990s, the Waterloo Region District School Board and the Catholic District School Board with the City of Kitchener have lobbied for the rezoning of the area and have now they've declared the area as a natural area. They have uh, set up a Huron Natural Area Independent Board and had Joe Medica conduct a comprehensive survey of the vegetation and everything. And now more recently in 2019, over the summer, me and my crew leader have been conducting a, a VSP sampling over the area. So this is a photo I found of 1954 over here on Natural Area. Those colored outlines are the three pine plantations. And as you can see, they're mainly fields, I would assume, I guess, abandoned or used for livestock grazing. And you can kind of see the deciduous forest here making up the outline of the park. Fast forward to 2018, we can now see the pine plantations. We do also see the development of these uh, park trails, and we also see the development of City of Kitchener all around. So the objectives for these pine plantations in particular, they are to advance uh, the natural succession into a native forest in hopes of improving their structural and species diversity. There's the desire to control invasive plant species and also to protect the, the edge with fencing and native species. My study aims to help address the first two objectives by comparing the plantations and provide an overview of the forest structure and composition over the plantations. And the second objective is to take a look at the growth of invasive species, particularly the common buckthorn as they are, have been found to be the very widespread in, in the previous uh, vegetative survey. So this is a study area. So I'll be referring to these three pine plantations. The top left in red is plantation A, in the middle is plantation B, and in the bottom right is plantation C. All over here on natural area, me and my crew leader have been doing vegetative sampling at 100 uh, VSP plots all throughout here on natural area. These were randomly selected and 27 of which are found within these pine plantations, uh, each plot being 400 meters squared. Now, being randomly selected, they are different number of plots in each plantation. As you see in plantation A, there's only nine plots in an area of 8.3 hectares. In plantation B, there's 13 plots in 6.6 .6 hectares. And in plantation C, there's the fewest plots of five, and the lowest area of 3.6 hectares. The pines planted were a bit different. In Plantation A, they had white pine. In Plantation B, they had red pine, or have not 
in that past tense. Uh, plantation C was the first uh, plantation established and now approximately 53 to 64 years old. And the plantations A and B are approximately 47 to 53 years old. Uh, earlier in the 2007 updated master plan, they have noted the presence of buckthorns in plantations A and B. However, not in plantation C, they've noted that there was a large native establishment in that plantation. And as a result to the invasive species growth in 2012 and 2015, the city of Kitchener has been conducting mechanical and chemical control on buckthorns and dog strangling vine in plantation A. So the VSP sampling. So uh, we've been looking at vegetative uh, sampling. We looked at plant species by absolute cover in each plot, and we looked at each, by each vertical layer. So by canopy at over 10 meters, subcanopy between 2 to 10 meters, shrub 0.5 to 2 meters, and ground below half a meter. So for example, if a sugar maple takes up half the plot in the canopy, that's 50% canopy cover. But if there's like few seedlings in the bottom, that's like 0.1% in the ground cover of sugar maple. So for this project, we'll, for today, we'll be looking at plot uh, cover by layer, so and how much vegetation cover overall within each plot by each vertical layer. Like in canopy composition, what is the dominant tree species within each uh, plantation, looking at species diversity, and I'll be looking at the invasive species plot coverage, the spread of invasive species. So I have a bunch of results. Don't worry if you get a bit lost. There's a summary table at the end, but try to stick with me. So these uh, box plots look at the, uh, the percent vegetative cover for each plot within each plantation. On the on left is canopy cover, and they have A, B, and C from left to right. The y-axis is the total plot coverage. And from a one-way ANOVA, we find there's no significant difference. But looking at subcanopy, we do find that there is a find do find that plantation A has significantly less subcanopy cover than plantation B. Uh, in the shrub cover, we do find that plantation A has significantly more shrub cover than plantation B. And in the ground cover, we do find that plantation A has more ground cover than both B and C. All right, so canopy composition by the dominant tree species. So the x-axis of these graphs are the tree species. Y-axis is the plot average canopy cover, like on a typical plot, how much, what's the average cover? In plantation A, you do find the most commonly are white pines, around 15% plot cover. Do you know what that is? A bit of wide uh, error bars. The standard deviations are a bit large due to a lot of variations between plots. But anyway, white pine is expected due to the, that was being planted. Second place, or at also at 15%, is white spruce. This is a little bit unexpected as they are a shade tolerant species, and from the literature I found that they tend to not do well in competing with hardwood trees. Uh, I don't know if this, I can't, exp uh, this could be perhaps due to maybe that they grew when the soils were not suitable for other trees perhaps, or maybe they were planted. There are also a tree species that gets planted to improve degraded soils, though I wouldn't jump to that conclusion since I was never informed about a spruce plantation. I mean, you'll also see several deciduous trees. In plantation B, we do find majority, 22% of red pine. And then right after we do see we have black cherry and sugar maple, a shade intolerant and a shade tolerant species respectively. In plantation C, we do find majority of it by around usually typically 31% coverage is red pine and very few other trees with white pine being at second place at 2.75%. Now the subcanopy, this is common buckthorn. Uh, apologize for the, the name there. But it's the most common in plantation A at around 20%, followed by several deciduous trees. Plantation B in the subcanopy most commonly is 30% at of sugar maple, followed by common buckthorn. And then by plantation C, you find that the vast majority is almost 40% if each plot is typically covered with sugar maples with some common buckthorn. All right, now canopy composition. Here I am comparing between pines and naturally regenerated trees. So in other words, all, all the trees in the canopy, it's 
pines versus below everything else. So the light blue bars are the, are the percent of naturally regenerated trees, while the brown bars are the pines. If we're looking at plantation A, you'll find that a lot of plots have very few pines, or one plot had no pines at all. Plantation B, we do find a bit more of a variety. Some plantations have few pines, some a lot more. Some have a lot of naturally generated. There's a bit more of a mix. And in plantation C, we do find that every plot has mostly pines, with three plus not having any naturally regenerated trees in the canopy at all. All right, now species diversity. I should note that the amount of species we find is largely due to the number of plots in each plantation, which differ. Nine in plantation A, 13 in plantation B, five in plantation C. So of total species richness, there's 95 in plantation A, 100 in plantation B, 61 in C. If you look at just like how many species we typically find per plot, generally speaking, we find around 30 species in plantation A, in a and around 25 species per plot in plantations B and C. Looking at, at the Shannon Diversity Index for species diversity, we do find that plantation A has the highest at 1.95, plantation B has a value of 1.61, and plantation C has a value of 1.22. So these graphs look at invasive species. The bar graph on the left looks at the on average, for per plot, how much invasive species cover for each species. So x axis is a species, y axis is the plot, average plot cover. We do see that common buckthorn is the most common, especially in plantation A, of typically covering almost half or a bit over half the plot. Other invasive species, like lily of valley and garlic mustard, they tend to show up a lot in the ground cover. We did find dog strangling vine in plantation A just a little bit. Now, the graph on the right is plot proportion. So the number of plots for within each plantation we typically find, so for example, in the common buckthorn, that's 100% of the plots we find, meaning they're in every single plot we found in each plantation, so they're everywhere, basically. In Lily of Valley, we do find that they're in every plot in Plantation B and most of the other plantations, and so forth. And you see where dog shunkling vine, there are only in Plantation A, at least from what we found. So, buckthorn layer coverage. So here I've been looking at the cover of buckthorns within each vertical layer. So on the left is subcanopy coverage for each plot in each plantation, shrubs, and then ground coverage. Using one-way ANOVA, I find that there is no significant difference between plantations in the subcanopy and the ground. As for the shrub, the plantation A does have significantly more coverage than plantations. All right, so what the heck did I just say? So, canopy, because okay, this is all just to summarize really quick. Canopy, there's no significant difference of coverage. Subcanopy, A has less than B. Shrub, A has more than B. Ground, A has more than B and C. Species diversity, A has the highest, B, C has the lowest, B is in the middle. Invasive species, A has more buck, uh, thorn shrubs than B, and A also has the highest average of buckthorns. All right. so. Why are there these differences? I'm, I'm, going to, is be, I'm going to speak it mainly due to light intensity. As I mentioned before, a lot of these plots did not have much pine, uh, pines, especially in part Plantation A. If I don't have a well, you can see that there. But several plots had very few pines. One plot in particular had no pines. And that, that particular plot had like several concrete walls. It looked like the ruins. I felt like Indiana Jones is pretty cool. And instead of seeing pines, we saw a few black walnuts and a whole ton of shrubs and ground species. We were in that plot for a long time. There's way too many species there. But in contrast to Plantation C, it was consistently mainly pines. So the difference here is in Plantation A, we got a lot more sun. So the pines not creating that canopy to begin with in the first place allowed more plants, especially buckthorns, to grow. Buckthorns really like the sunlight. They are shade tolerant, but they grow best in open field. Where in Plantation C, where they're the opposite extreme with mainly pines everywhere that created the competition for sunlight and other resources, so fewer other species could grow in there. And we did have, noted, have I had, did have noted that in the subcanopy, it did mainly consist of sugar maples, a shade tolerant species, and B is more or less, the, I guess, the in between. Also, should know about the trails. 
So I, I was hesitant to quantify trails because you couldn't see most of the trails. There are several in BNC, but they're covered by canopy. But looking at Plantation Net, you can easily see the trails there. They do divide up the canopy. And because of that, they do, uh, in the literature, it has been found that blackthorns tend to uh, crowd around trails due to that uh, canopy opening, but also as well due to trails tend to facilitate the spread of invasive species due to people walking on trails and spreading the seeds. So why is this important? What can we take away from this? Invasive species management. So unfortunately, every pine plantation has invasive species, including C, which did not have that beforehand, and including A, which had uh, control earlier. So recommendation is to develop a long-term strategy plan, at least advised by the Ontario Invasive Plant Council. Uh, they have been established all over the park. It's not going to be cheap and easy. They recommend, rec uh, they recommend dedicating a time of the year every year to monitor and uh, control invasive species. Other species that might be noteworthy to remove include lily of the valley and garlic mustard. They do take up a considerable amount of ground cover. Next, uh, not looking at natural succession, plantations A and B already have several deciduous trees up in the canopy. However, plantation C seems to be making a slower transition. There's very few other trees besides red pines, and it does also have the lowest species diversity. One possible recommendation, recommendation or option to do is to do some forest management, to do some thinning. A lower pine density, uh, density can introduce more canopy gaps, which allow more species to grow and thrive. So I should warn, that, warn you that uh, that also gives a chance for buckthorn to grow, so that will require a lot of monitoring and replanting. Also, on also a side note, a lower pine density can make the stand also less vulnerable to storm damage. These pines have grown, were unmanaged, they've grown long and thin, they're growing cylindrical shape. If you look, they move a lot in a gentle breeze. It's a little bit worrying from my view. <laughs> I hope they don't fall on me. <laughs> so I've been reckoning to do some thinnings. Yeah, those are my recommendations. So acknowledgements. I'd like to thank Daniela for much needed guidance and feedback on the capstone and the opportunity to do the VSP in the internship. I'd like to thank Joshua for much advice and support over the internship and for the capstone. And special thanks to David, Wazel, and Richard for their instruction and plant identification. Uh, I'd like to thank Catherine, Rebecca, and Shannon for, for their uh, VSP training and uh, assistance. And I'd like to thank Scott Dowell. Do, do, I'd like to thank Scott. He's my uh, VSP crew leader, and he's been really good at identifying plants. It would have been really difficult without him. Thank you. Am I ready? Yeah. All right. All right. Questions? Uh, there's a question right over here on this. Oh, I guess it's right there first. So I'm curious about the lily of the valley. So what's your thinking? Why is there? So I tried and, to look and up black the walnut. Oh, I they... So I, I tried to look up the literature on lily of the valley. Uh, I couldn't find much, well, and I couldn't find any literature on them as an invasive species. It's really only been considered an invasive species by websites like the Terror's Invasive Plant Council, but. They seem very concerning to me, at least, because they do take up a considerable amount of ground cover. I didn't look; I didn't put up the ground cover species, but they tend to take up usually the majority of ground cover species. And typically, if there's like a gap in the canopy, you'll see like a ray of sunshine, like a spotlight. You'll just see a whole bunch of lily of the valley circling that whole spotlight and like nothing else. So where are they coming from? Where are they coming from? I can't say for sure. Again, the literature I was trying to look for. Your fast plot that you did in a few minutes. What? Sorry? There was one easy plot to do. What? Remember? Easy plot? The house and black walnuts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that. So, oh, what am I saying? The European Villa of the Valley. What am I saying? They're European. I forgot already. Yeah. Garden plants. So that used yeah. to be a farmhouse and from there spread to the woodlot. Oh, that used to be a farmhouse? Is that what yeah. It might have been? That's what you described based on plants here. Oh, that would make a lot of sense, would it? Would it? <laughs> Um, thank you for all that information. That's a lot of, de lot of data, for sure. Uh, just based on all of that data, and you don't have to get into detail, but 
would you have recommendations as to where to where to start, A, B, or C, or right. is there one area that has more potential? So are you referring to uh, invasive? Uh, just to plantation management. Plantation management? Just based, just recommendations. So would, then, would, would you like want to prioritize then, like say, natural regeneration or like invasive control? You, you tell me based on what you think the, the data was telling you. Like, I want, I want to say that the buckthorns have already grown into there. You might want to try to stop that from happening. Try to get them out as soon as possible. Uh, some bit of concern it is like where the entrance is. So it might need to try to like. Do, like, I also recommend doing some thinnings. Thinnings might be, I'm not well thinking about it, it's a bit tricky because that's where the entrance is and I don't know if people would like the sight of that or maybe I have to try to do tricky to keep a good aesthetic appeal. But anyways, I would recommend seed due to its low species diversity and try to stop buckthorns as soon as possible. Right, another question? Just as in terms of a follow-up question, um, the do nothing, like if we did nothing, what do you see? <laughs> What do you see these areas becoming? And, and I think to a question we heard earlier about potential, like what potential exists in an area like this if you don't manage it? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear with the laughter. Could you repeat um, that? Just I'm curious about what, if we do nothing, so if we do don't take any all. actions in these plantations, what do you think will become or what potential is there in these, these types of areas? So. So I expect that buckthorns to continue growing. They do form dense thickets that choke out other species. That is a concern. Other invasive species, like the garlic mustard, are also alo, al, how do I word this? Alopatric. They do also reduce the species diversity. So I'm expecting plantation C to just keep on having a further growth of buckthorns. Not ever entirely. Some areas, like especially the ones by the trails, those ones are like just completely dead on the floor, nothing but needles. I partially ex suspect that might be due to the sugar maple subcanopy just giving a shade all over the place, that's a guess. But in areas where there's a canopy gap, buckthorns are going to find and go in there. And I guess maybe if you do nothing, there is maybe the off chance a storm damage might happen and that might could give an opportunity for buckthorns to grow, possibly. As for A and B, I, I, I would expect invasives to keep growing. I'm not sure if May, like may, maybe the species diversity, maybe just, I don't, I can't say for 100% for sure if they will decrease, but at least not increase as more. That helps. Uh, question over here. Um, in my experience where black walnut has been able to get is established and have Bit of dominance over an area that there's less of a problem with invasives. Have, have you examined the area where the black walnut are here to see if that effect is is, is present? Yeah, I remember you mentioning in the last presentation. So unfortunately, we didn't find that many black walnuts. Like the black walnuts I mentioned, they were all. It looks like there's, there's, this is like 2.9 percent. That's all in that farmhouse plot. Uh, I would have to check again if the, how many invasive species are in that particular plot. So I'm afraid I cannot answer that question very well. I apologize. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah.